Can we just request the brothers to kindly come forward, inch forward, inshallah, and create an atmosphere of togetherness? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي خلق الخلق ليعبدوه وحبب إليهم الإيمان ليذكروه وأسبغ عليهم نعمه ظاهرة وباطنة ليشكروه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الذين صحبوه ونصروه إلى يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال جل وعلا في كتابه المجيد وفرقانه الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا جبال أوي بي معه والطير وألنا له الحديد أن اعمل سابغات وقدر في السرد واعملوا صالحا إني بما تعملون بصير صدق الله العظيم May Allah bless our honorable, venerable Manana Huzaifa for his kind, generous sentiments. And may Allah make me as he thinks of me. And may Allah allow us to benefit from each other. Just to develop on the sentiments echoed by him that we all ought to have the quest and the passion of learning. Uh, this is key. This is important. Uh, and, and that is the spirit of the believer. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said, امرأة خدعتني امرأة زهدتني امرأة فقهتني Amazing He said one woman taught me fiqh One woman taught me piety And one woman deceived me Everybody smiling on the third one <laughs> امرأة فقهتني One woman taught me fiqh She asked me a question. Is the echo on? She asked me a question and I did not know the answer regarding fiqh. So because of that, I had to go back to my textbooks. I had to look, I had to research, I had to further study. And then I reverted to her. But her question prompted me to study further. Imra'atun faqqahatni. Imra'atun zahadatni. One woman taught me piety. Subhanallah. I was walking and she said, هذا الذي يصلي الفجر بوضوء العشاء. This is the Abu Hanifa who performs fajr with the wudu of Isha. Meaning his whole night is in worship. But that was not the case. So I took her sentiments as a dua, as a motivation, as an encouragement. And I said, if this is what people are thinking of me, then it's time I start delivering on what they assume about me. So her generous sentiments about me, I took it as tafa'ul, as motivation, encouragement. And from that day onwards, I developed that regiment and practice. We quite casual to embrace the praises of others, though it does not deserve us, though we don't deserve it. Somebody offers us a casual praise, you know, we, we, we happily take it, we happily take it. And, you know, we won't tell the person, no, listen, I, I'm not like that. And nor do we have an intention to develop that. And imra'atun khada'atni, one woman deceived me. How it was, she pointed to an item on the floor. Now, obviously, we refer to it as luqta in Arabic. And if it is a child, it's referred to as laqit. Right? So if you find some item left elsewhere, here, there, uh, if you pick it up, arif ifasaha wa wika'aha, there's a responsibility. You've got to find the owner. You've got to return it. You've got to keep it safe. Or then, you know, you, you just move on. But if you pick it up, you take on a responsibility. You take on a responsibility because you've picked it up, so you're liable. It's, it's, it's just not picking it up. It comes with a responsibility. So she pointed to an item. فَتَوَهَّمْتُ أَنَّهَا خَرْسَا فَتَوَهَّمْتُ أَنَّهَا خَرْسَا 
So I thought she is mute. She cannot speak. When I picked it up, he said, now return it to the owner. So, oops, I, I was now, you know, trapped into the whole thing. Uh, her sign language suggested to me that she's unable to speak, and hence I responded. And when I picked it up, she said, well, now you have to take care of it. And of course, Imam Abu Hanifa was Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah. It was not like, you know... <laughs> uh, uh, one person said I was dealing with Abu Hanifa rahimahullah in business. So he had given me some clothing and I went to sell. It's mentioned in the Surah Min Hayat al Tabi'een. And then Imam Abu Hanifa said, See, this particular garment here has got a defect in it. So when you sell this item and this cloth uh, and this merchandise, then you need to notify the buyer that this is defected and hence the price will be reduced and if he's happy with it as it is, then he can take it. The man agreed with whom they had entered into the uh, arrangement and off he went. And he then sold everything, one uh, nasiya, and he forgot to inform the, ba'ir, the buyer when he sold the item to say that, you know what, uh, this item is defected. And when he came back, Imam Abu Hanifa asked him, how was it? He said, I sold everything. Here's the profits, here's the dividends, here's the return. Did you inform that person that uh, the particular item, that one piece of cloth? He said, oops, I forgot. Okay, can you recall, can you track, can you trace who, when, how? No, no idea. He said, well, then I feel the only way out is all the profits we got from this entire, you know what, uh, shipment, we give it in charity. Yeah, so these were people with true meaning and substance to life. And this is the key thing. Let me say something here. The ulama tell us, loving the world is not a problem. In fact, it's necessary. And it's, it's a given. It becomes problematic when you love it more than Allah and His Nabi. So what's the verse of the Quran? وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Hakim al-Umma writes, أَحَبِّيَّتْ مَذْمُومْ هَا مَحْبُوبِيَّتْ مَذْمُومْ نَيَّا أَحَبِّيَّتْ مَذْمُومْ هَا When you love your material things more than Allah, this is now when it's problematic. Loving it is not a problem. But you can only determine if you love it more or less at the time of conflict of interest. When there is a harmonious relation, there are two friends. And you say, I love this one more than that one. But you get in along with all three. They two get in along, you get in along. Now your claim is just a claim. But the day they two have a clash, where your allegiance goes, that will dictate who you are closer to and who is more important. At the time of conflict of interest, somebody dangles a carrot and a candy before you. It's lucrative. It's profitable. But then you consult with the scholars. They say, no, 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 no. This is bordering with doubt, with interest, with deception, with uncertainty. As lucrative as it is, Islamically, I can't give you an official green light to say this deal is in order. Now we're going to see what is closer to you and what is more dear to you. And that's the question and that's the challenge. Anyway, the Ayat al-Karima that I recited before you, just as a thought as we draw close towards the end of Ramadan, may Allah allow us to maximize and optimize on these, uh, you know, last few days. Uh, it's wrong and it's bad to break your fast at any time in the day. But it gets even worse if you break it just before iftar. If you break it just before iftar, like you, you, you were there and you broke it. You're right at the tail end. This is the time to optimize. This is the time to maximize. Ad-dunya kulluha shahru siyamin lil muttaqeen. The truth be told, the world in its entirety is a fasting month for the believer 
with varying levels of fast. The world in its entirety is a fasting month for the believer, figuratively, metaphorically. Currently, we are in the formal fast. And soon, when the crescent of Shawwal will be sighted, the formal fast of dawn to dusk will end and will resume with eat and drink, etc. And then those things that are permanently prohibited will remain active that fast. Jo zindagi ko guzarega Ramzan ki tara, mot aegi uske paas Eid ke chan ki tara. The one who will live his life like Ramadan, meaning in discipline, then hopefully he will receive the angel of death with the same joy with which he receives the crescent of Eid. Ad-dunya kulluha shahru siyamin lil muttaqeen wa'eidu fitrihim yawma liqa'i rabbil alameen. And the supreme Eid, the actual Eid, is the day we meet Allah. وَمُعْضَمُ نَهَارِ الصِّيَامِ قَدْ ذَهَبْ And with an average lifespan of 60 to 70, many of us have passed the halfway mark of our fast. With an, of course, only Allah knows the exact life of each person, but talking averagely, a lifespan of 60 to 70, that's our fast on earth. So with that average lifespan, for many of us, half our fast is over. Some of us might be in the final moments of our fast. And that supreme Eid with our Allah is fast approaching. And the trials of this world are unending. Its happy moments will visit you occasionally like the two Eids. One of the reasons, amongst others, why a believer achieves better in Ramadan, in addition to, of course, the virtue of this month, the demons and the devils are shackled, it is a month of blessings, etc. But from a point of discipline, you will find that the believer is productive because in Ramadan, everybody is operating on a strict timetable. Everybody... I can't waste time. Sorry, man. I'm going to rush for Tarawi. We'll talk later. Okay, I'll see you, man. I need to get some sleep. You know why? I need to get back home. I've got to complete my Quran, get sleep, and then I'm off to work. Talk later. See you later. I, I, I don't have time. I, I can't give you more time. I cannot. <laughs> Hassan Basri said, I met the Sahaba. I found them to be more generous with money than time. We're the direct opposite. I found the Sahaba. Adraktu aqwaman kana ahaduhum ashaha. Ashaha, shahi, ashah. They would hold back on the time. Money you could take any amount. We the direct opposite. When it comes to money, the first is tight. When it comes to time, the night is young, brother. The night is young. The night is young. Enjoy. And you know, when you sit and you start chit-chatting, wasting time, apart from the wasting of time being harmful, the inevitable negative of that is when you're going to have a prolonged social discussion, what it's going to be? You're going to gossip. You're going to blurt nonsense. Allah speaks about three of the evil practices amongst others that were found in the Meccans in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Yabihi refers to the Kaaba. They were proud and arrogant on their association as custodians or caregivers to the Kaaba. 
May Allah bless us with humility in the services of deen that we are doing. May Allah make us humble. I mentioned it the other day, I'll say it. Hakimul Ummah rahimahullah said, you can argue and say, you've done more work than others. That's a fact. You know more than others. That's a fact. You've memorized 25 Jews, he's memorized 10 Jews. You ask the brother, have you memorized more? No, 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 it's all the same. How can 25 and 10 be the same? Of course you've memorized more. That's fair, that's correct. And you can claim it, and you're entitled to say that. There's nothing wrong, there's no, there's no pride in that. That's a fact. Look at the balance and understanding things objectively. You've been for more Hajj? No, 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 no. I haven't been. Okay, so what's the 10 stamps in your passport? Of course you've been for 10 Hajj. You? No, I haven't been. So it's correct to say, I visited the Kaaba more than him. I know more than him. But then to claim you are better than him, that's problematic. Because it's highly possible Allah's rejected your 10 Hajj and accepted his intention of Hajj. You've memorized 25 Jews, of course you know more. He only knows 10. It's highly possible Allah's rejected your 25 and Allah's accepted his 10. When Junaid Baghdadi passed away, someone seen him in a dream and asked him, how was it? He said, Halakatil ibarat wa faniyatil isharat wa ma nafa'ana illa ruka'at fi jawf al-layl. Halakatil ibarat wa faniyatil isharat. Oh, we had all these fine things we were writing, capturing, documenting, researching. Allah didn't accept it. Wa ma nafa'ana illa ruka'at. You know, ruka'at is ism al diminutive. And a little bit of prayer we used to do in the dead of night. Allah said, Junaid, that impressed me, go. It's his prerogative. I mean, you go apply for visa. Okay, you guys got British passports, so probably you guys don't apply many visas, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, people from Africa who need to apply everywhere they go. All embassies you go, you submit, you furnish, you just see a nice, yeah. The ambassador reserves the right, and it's his prerogative to approve or decline without any explanation. So if it's approved, good luck. If it's not, you're not going to get an explanation. So when you, when you start talking, and you, then you're going to automatically go into, it's, it's gossip. So Allah said they had this here, مستكبرين به, they were proud. Number two, Samiran. Samir actually in Arabic means to chat chat, but it refers to a moonlit night. So when the moon was bright, right, we say the ayyami bidh. It's actually not ayyami bidh, it's layali bidh, right? Because the ayyama always bidh. If you know Arabic what I'm saying, you say ayyami bidh, the bright days, 13, 14, 15, right? The ayyama always bidh, the sun is out. But those are the nights where the nights are bright. But you just say ayyami bidh like that, that's how it's referred to, right? So they used to come out and then they used to sit and chat chat. And when they used to chat chat, tahjurun, they used to blurt nonsense. Because that's what you're doing, you're sitting, you're talking. Go see where the youth are. Go see in the shisha cafes and the shops and everything. And see how it has just destroyed a generation of youth. The whole nights just sit, just smoke, just kill their time, just pass their life out completely. Life is just melting away. So, in terms of plan of action going forward to remain on pattern and to achieve, one of the first things a believer needs to do post Ramadan is maintain some schedule. Of course, you can't maintain the same strict, stringent one, there's no doubt about that. But you've got to be operating within a timetable. A believer has to be operating in a timetable. If you, if you don't have time, Imam Shafi said, Sahibtu Sufiya, Falam antafi' minhum illa bi kalimatain. I stayed with the pious and I learned two things from them. Al waqtu saifun, qata'tahu aw qata'ak. Time is a sword. 
either you cut through it or it cuts through you. ونفسك شغلتها بالحق أو شغلتك بالباطل. شغلتها بالحق either you're going to be telling yourself, listen, go and sleep now, or then your nafs is going to tell you, go on the net. Either you're going to say, go read Quran, or then it's going to tell you, go do something else. So when we look at the pious, then all of them operated with a timetable. The verse I recited before you is a verse of Surah Al-Sabah. So Allah speaks about the favors of Allah Ta'ala upon Dawood alayhi salam and uh, how Allah had inspired him with the art and the skill of making armor. He used to make armor. وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ صَنْعَةَ لَبُوسٍ لَكُمْ لِتُحْصِنَكُمْ مِنْ بَأْسِكُمْ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ شَاكِرُونَ And we taught him, عَلَّمْنَاهُ صَنْعَةَ The art, the skill of making armor. لِتُحْصِنَكُمْ مِنْ بَأْسِكُمْ That can protect you in the battle. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ شَاكِرُونَ So Allah said to Dawood alayhi salam, أَنِعْمَلْ سَابِغَاتٍ Look at the lessons we learn from Quran. Look at the lessons we learn. An'amal sabigatin that make armor, but let it be broad and wide. Sabigat. So let it not be narrow and restricted. Let it be beautiful, wide. Structure it well. Qadir fi sardi. Qaddir has two meanings here. Measure the size of the links when you weave it. So when you make the links of the armor, then let there be consistency in it. Qaddara yuqaddiru taqdir to measure. Faqadarna fani'ma al-qadirun inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu biqadar. Allah says, we've created everything with divine measure. وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا أَمْ بِقَدَرٍ We've sent down water with measure. In everything of Allah, there is measure. And what is taqdeer? Taqdeer, in essence, is the divine measure of Allah regarding you and I. So Allah told Dawood alayhi salam, when you make the links of the armor, then measure it. From this, the scholars deduce that it is a myth which needs to be dispelled that Islam principally is supposedly averse to professionalism. That's a myth. No, 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 no. Islam does dunya not even do anything. Nonsense. Hogwash. Islam says do it thorough. Do it correct. Do it excellent. Don't put your heart in it. Don't love it. That doesn't mean you mustn't do it properly. I keep on saying this here. Islam said don't keep a dog as a pet. It will be a gross misinterpretation to say that Islam advocates cruelty to dogs. Islam never said be cruel to any animal. Islam said be kind to every creature. You talk today, they're talking of uh, you know, preserving uh, the environment and eco-friendly and green emissions and trying to make the environment better. And fiza aludgi, as they talk of it, contamination of the atmosphere. Allah speaks about Sulaiman alayhi salam that when the wind was subservient for him and he was airborne with his entire entourage, then one of the words the Quran references in the wind that was subservient and he used to take this flight, rukhaan. Rukhaan. Rukhaan means. He would be airborne with his entire army, which was gentle to the environment. Go check up the tafsir. Rukha'an. To the extent that experts on the exegesis of the Quran say, it wouldn't even disturb a bird flying in that direction. Rukha'an. Naram hawa. Gentle. Polite. Eco-friendly. So... You, you, you cannot say Islam doesn't teach you about protecting and preserving nature and, uh, you know, protecting greenery. Islam protects it. Qaddir fi sardi. 
Qaddir fi sardi. Like we say, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wore old clothes. But he wore clean clothes. You, you mince in your words if you consider old to be soiled. The Prophet of Allah in terms of hygiene was absolute. Every form of hygiene, from oral hygiene, bodily hygiene, every regard. The Messenger Wasallam's hygiene was of absolute, the highest level. And he promoted it, he advocated it. When he came to Quba and the masjid was built, and then Allah revealed the verse, these people of Quba are very clean. Nabi Wasallam said, ask them, Allah has praised them. Bihi rijalun. We, we have a masjid. You say, oh, you know where the carpet is from? You know where the minaret is from? You know where the mimbar is from? Hey, when are we going to have good musallis? When are we going to have good musallis? That we got this year. You see the chandeliers? My word. My word. Oh, wow. When are we going to have the right... People who are frequenting. What did the Quran say about Quba? In Quba, they are real musallis. Fihi rijal. The people that pray in the yuhibbuna an yatataharu. They're very pure. They're very clean. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, summon them. Allah has praised them. They were modest. They said, oh Nabi of Allah, nothing much. He said, no, Allah has praised you. They said, nutbi'u al-ahjar al-ma'a. Nutbi'u al-ahjar al-ma'a. When we relieve ourselves, we would use a lump of soil and that would absorb the impurity. Followed by that, we would use the, the pur purification process of water. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this is it, Allah has praised you for this. And then he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by the grave. يُعَذَّبَان وَمَا يُعَذَّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرِ بَلَا إِنَّهُ كَبِيرِ These two people in this grave are being punished. They're not being punished for anything severe. Nay, it is severe. But they didn't consider it severe. One of them used to carry tails. The other one was negligent with regards to urine drops. Since when does a Muslim stand and pass water? Since when does a Muslim do this? Istanzihu min al bowl, fa inna amma ta'adab al qabr min. The Prophet Wasallam's hygiene, cleanliness, of every level, of every form, was just par excellent, impeccable. So I was saying to you, in terms of continuing after Ramadan, to be productive in your life, one of the elementary aspects is, as in Ramadan, you operate with a schedule and a timetable. You can make your timetable a bit more flexible, but you have to be operating with a timetable. If you don't operate with a timetable, it's just a matter of time where you lose everything. Study the greats of all times. The common denominator was discipline. Religious or otherwise, nobody operated without a timetable. Our whole salah is a timetable. In the salat kanat al mu'minina, kitabam mawquta, kitabam mawquta, muwakkat, time. Allah didn't say, come in the morning, pray for two hours and you're done and go for the day. No, no, there's a timetable, and this is the time. It's going, to, it's, it's going to regulate when you sleep, it's going to regulate when you get up. And this is what keeps man functional. What's the challenge of a believer's life? There's no retirement. Till your last, you're praying. So you've got to remain in schedule right till your end. That's what I said my opening at dunya kullu hashahru siyam. The life of a believer on earth is a, is a fasting month with varying levels of fasting. So Qaddir, one translation is that measure. And here also the scholars say, when Allah told Sayyidina Nuh salam to build the ark, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِ أَنْ يَصْنَعِ الْفُلْكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا The Ahlul Lugha, the grammarian, those who mastered the Arabic language, they say, Allah didn't say, أَنِّجْعَلِ الْفُلْكَ Allah said, أَنِّصْنَعِ الْفُلْكَ You have sana'a in Arabic and you have ja'ala. Commonly, outwardly, apparently, they are like synonyms, mutaradifat. But there's a fine difference. Sana'a means build the ark properly. Islam teaches you to do things correctly. O oh, Nabi of Allah, what can I do? 
تعين صانعا او تصنع لاخرك اخرك الذي لا يتقن الفعل help someone do something who is not skilled help him assist him you skilled in something probably he doesn't know and he's battling to do it get in there help him and assist him islam is so beautiful it's so practical it's so pragmatic it's so user friendly you got to understand the text holistically to have the absolute harmony and the harmonious uh, uh, synchronization of the text otherwise you will create your own disparity and inconsistencies i just told you now earlier islam doesn't say don't love the world you have to love it it's natural don't love it more than allah that's when it's problematic another meaning of qaddir is fix a time both this tafsir are mentioned in ma'rif al-quran do it o dawud measure it nicely but fix a time let it not consume all your time subhanallah fix a time qaddir fi sard you got to do this this is a uh, and and wa alanna lahu al-hadid allah said we had softened the steel for him so miraculously the steel for him you know that was made soft so this is ifbatul khawariq ifbatul khawariq the establishment of a miracle that allah had divinely made this easy for him that the steel would just soften kashamri uh, like wax and then he would just mold it bend it and he would uh, you know make that armor so qaddir fi sardi gave us two perspectives fix a time qaddir fi sardi do it with discipline and then what did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to daud alayhi salam i'malu ala daud shukra wa qalilun min ibadi ash-shukur allah didn't say to daud alayhi salam ushkuruni allah said i'malu ala daud shukra o oh, the family of daud display exhibit present gratitude so verbal gratitude is part of the package of gratitude but it's not the be all it's the beginning to the greater gratitude the real thing is walk the talk deliver on it display it i'malu amal i'malu ala dawud shukra wa qalilun min ibadi ash-shukur sayyidna umar radiyallahu anhu had appointed in hims uh saeed bin amir radiyallahu anhu as a governor hims was known as al kuwaifatu as-sughra so kufa was notorious that nobody could last there it was very volatile terrain so hims had a reputation like this it's another kufa you won't last long there i'm not saying anything more you know now this is it. so anyway saeed bin amir radiyallahu anhu was made the governor there and it wasn't long that people had objections with him so saidna umar radiyallahu anhu was disappointed on two fronts number one is that uh, i had great trust in saeed bin amir and i know he wouldn't disappoint me So now people are having issues that gets me worried did i read him wrong was my expectations you know beyond what he he was so anyway they summoned said na umar radiyallahu anhu summoned uh, saeed bin amir and the people of hims came as well and yeah there is an official hearing that's taking place saeed bin amir the governor on one side the people of hims on the other side said na umar said ma tashtakuna minhu what are your people's issues about him so they said nashku arba'an min af'alihi we we have an objection to four things number 1 la yakhruj ilaina hatta yata'ala an-nahar as the governor we don't have access to him till late morning early noon so early morning if we need to meet with him is not available So Umar radiyallahu anhu said Saeed what's your response to this He said 
my house, my family, my spouse doesn't have any domestic helper. So I assist in all the domestic chores. And when all that is done, it kind of occupies my morning. And thereafter, I come out. Hence, I'm not available in the morning because my role as a husband and a spouse uh, preoccupies me with my domestic chores. This is the governor of the time. You know, there's one thing I mentioned. We often say the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ used to assist in domestic chores. But we forget how small his house was. He used to help in the house when the house was so small that Aisha radiallahu said, if he prostrated in a room, then I had to fold my legs up because the room couldn't accommodate me stretching my leg and him prostrated. That was the room. Okay, what is your second issue? The second issue is that uh, There's one day in the month he doesn't come out. So Umar looked at Sa'id bin Amir and he said, what's this? He said, I don't own excess clothing to what I wear. So I need to give it a wash every so often and then I have to wait for it to dry up. And that takes me away from the public eye till my garment dries up because I don't have surplus clothes that I can alternate it. That's the governor of the time. Okay, your third one. In the night, he's never available. I mean, whatever happens, he's not available. So Umar looked at Sa'id bin Amir and he said, if they have an issue at night, what's the problem? Why are you not available? He said, جَعَلْتُ النَّهَارَ لَهُمْ وَجَعَلْتُ اللَّيْلَ لِلَّهِ the day is for the creation, the night is for Allah. If in the night also I meet with the creation, then when will I be conversing with Allah? La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. What discipline? What discipline? The night is... Uh, Allah says, Inna laka nahari sabahan tawila Ay inna laka an tasbaha fi bahri al-insani Verily, the standing up in nocturnal, in vigil at night, it's more effective in the crushing of the ego. And it gets your utterances more focused. Everyone is sleeping. It's just peaceful. The house is quiet. Your mind is relaxed. The atmosphere is fresh. It's so peaceful, so tranquil to read, to study, to pray, to supplicate. The moment is just so peaceful. When Allah speaks about the pious, Allah says, Kanu min ma The Ahlul Lugha say in this ayah, Kanu Qalil, every word here indicates qillat. Kanu Qalil, min tab'id, yahja'oon. In the night, they used to sleep very little. Wabil ashari hum yastaghfirun. And then they were up and then it was just them, them and they Allah and, and, and engaging in prayer. So why don't you answer anyone at night? The night is for Allah. The day is. You know, Allah speaks about the pagan Arab and one of their uh, strange practices. So they had a lot of strange practices. And the scholars tell us it's just not a matter of reading it and going on. Look at how relatable it is to you. For example, they had this practice here. Uh, there were four months that are sacred, right? The Quran speaks about it. So there's four months that are sacred, three are mutawaliyat. So in those four months, they wouldn't go into battle. They wouldn't go into war. The Arab, even in the pre-Islamic time, right? Uh, they would respect the sanctity of Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, uh, Rajab, Muharram, etc. These are sacred months. But say, for example, there was a need uh, they had a skirmish or they had an altercation uh, with any tribe and they needed to go to war, then a tribe leader would just stand up and say, uh, we've just put Muharram on hold this year. We've put Muharram on hold this year. We're just shuffling the months here. There's been a crisis here and we have to go out. So then they would adjust the months. Hilarious as you can believe, laughable as you want to think. Allah speaks about this in the Quran. 
يضل به الذين كفروا يحلونه عاما ويحرمونه عاما ليواطئوا عدة ما حرم what is this what is religion chop change cut paste apply cross legislation what You, absolute no no discipline left so another practice amongst them was and that's what i want to say you got to look at it uh, uh, the quran speaks about the pagan arab today we recite it wa idha bushira ahaduhum bima dharaba lirrahman mathala dalla wajhuhu muswaddan wa huwa kadhim that when the pagan arab was told a girl was born then he didn't know how to face society and today the world wants to accuse islam of misogyny it's the furthest from the truth today we recited in surah shura when allah spoke about blessing a couple with children allah started off on the gender of female When Allah spoke about I bless a couple with children some I give daughters some I give sons some I give both some I give none I know what I'm doing That's exactly what Allah says Some I give daughters some I give sons some I give both some I give none I know what I'm doing Wow wow man wow my just gives me shiver in my whole body Ya habu liman yasha inasa وَيَهْبُ لِمَن يَشَاءُ الذُّكُورَ أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا وَإِنَاثًا وَيَجْعَلُ مَن يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ قَدِيرٌ I don't even know how to translate it. يَهْبُ لِمَن يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا Whoever he feels, he gives them daughters. وَثِلَا بِنْ أَسْقَعْ says, the adoption of the commencement of a female gender is suggestive to the fact that a couple and a woman whose first issue whose first produce whose first child is a girl that woman and that couple is blessed then you want to accuse us of misogyny and you want to say islam doesn't give recognition to the rights of women hogwash man Allah didn't start off on male Allah started on the female Ya bu liman yasha'u inatha wa ya bu liman yasha'u dhukur I mean I, I know so many friends you know so please make dua Allah gives us a daughter fourth son fifth son a friend of mine's now seven sons I know another friend of mine's 10 sons I know a friend of mine's six daughters yahabu liman yasha'u inatha and i know hundreds of couples that i personally counsel who would do anything in the world to just have any child whatever the gender is wallahi i have counseled tens of hundreds of couples in this regard may allah grant every woman that is desirous of a child may allah fill her belly and fill her lap with a healthy baby او يزوجهم ذكرانا واناثا ويجعل من يشاء عقيما انه عليم قدير so yeah this is anyway what are we talking about la ilaha illallah last okay na 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 hat the ticket ni krigela okay we'll come back don't worry whatever Allah puts in the mind but we were speaking on one aspect there of Saeed bin Amir there was one other last aspect left there and I was talking about the discipline of time the discipline of time his night was for Allah his day was for the creation you have to draw these limits and you don't allow anyone to encroach on it anyone to infringe on it because that's the only way you will complete your your regimen your practice your recitation you will complete it otherwise each one yes we were talking about the practice of the pagan arab so one other practice they had was that when they used to harvest their produce then they used to say this is for allah and this is for our gods right 
What they considered for Allah, they would have the wayfarer, the poor, the orphan, the widow. And what they would say for their gods was they used to offer it as offerings in their places of worship. So the, the first mistake was to create a division because everything is for Allah. But then to add salt to injury and to exacerbate the problem, so they used to assign this is for gods, this is for Allah. Now sometimes there used to be an overlap. The share of Allah, what they decided, right, used to go on to the share of the gods. Then they were quite accommodating and tolerant. Allah is independent, Allah is self-sufficient, so even if it was less there, it's fine, because Allah doesn't need. I'm giving you the verse of the Quran, and then I'll show you the relatable aspect. And then if it was the other way around, if occasionally the share that they felt they need to give to their gods in their places of worship went on to the share that they assigned for Allah by mistake, you know, this got put there and that got put here and somehow the accounts just got crisscrossed. Then they were quick to separate this. No, 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 this is, this is the share of our gods. وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ مِمَّا ذَرَأَ مِنَ الْحَرْثِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ نَصِيبًا فَقَالُوا هَذَا لِلَّهِ بِزَعْمِهِمْ وَهَذَا لِشُرَكَائِنَا فَمَا كَانَ لِشُرَكَائِهِمْ فَلَا يَصِلُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ فَهُوَ يَصِلُ إِلَى شُرَكَائِهِمْ سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ Oh my word, I wish you knew Arabic my brother. وَجَعَلُوا And they assigned لِلَّهِ for Allah مِمَّا from that ذَرَأَ مِنَ الْحَرْثِ from the produce that came out نَصِيبًا a share فَقَالُوا they alleged هَذَا لِلَّهِ supposedly this is for Allah بِزَعْمِهِمْ as they assumed وَهَذَا لِشُرَكَائِنَا and this much produce, this much crops uh, this vegetation is for our gods فَمَا كَانَ لِشُرَكَائِهِمْ What went to their gods could never be passed over to the share assigned for Allah. وَمَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ But what was the share assigned for Allah according to their warped calculations would easily go on the other side. سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ Evil indeed were the choices they made. سَاءَ in Arabic is what we refer to as فَيْلَ ذَمْ you have ni'ma and habbada, and you have bi'sa and sa'a. Af'al madah and dham. Now, Mufti Shafi Rahmatullahi writes in Ma'rif al-Quran, let's take that in our life. I have my program. Morning is fajr, then I'm at the gym, not me, but averagely, right? Uh, I got three boys that are, mashallah, if you see them, they all, you know, maybe my sons are like really into these things, man. Anyway. Uh, Everybody says rather there than anywhere else. Okay, however, well, yeah. So after Fajr is in the gym, burning, doing your whatever it is. Then after that, uh, probably come home, take a shower, and then it's a coffee, catch up on the news, get in your office, whatever, and then uh, leave for work or whatever it is. So this is your own program that you made and I made. Now, sometimes... When you had visitors at night and you slept late because of which the program next day gets disrupted, what's the first casualty of disruption? Does the gym go or the fajr in the masjid that goes? Understand what I'm saying? Now the adjustments are happening. What was for Allah? It's fine. It can move over the side, man. That one we can tolerate. It's okay. It's fine, man. Allah is independent. Allah knows my intention, man. I had a late night. Yesterday I wasn't at the gym. The next day I'm doubling my hours. Oh my word. Exact what the pagan Arab did, today is found. You will realize, you will chop, you will change, you will adjust in terms of all your religious schedules. Even you made commitments to donate and contribute. Mashallah, again, I could add on to what Haji Sab spoke. I travel to Malawi often. I travel to Malawi often, and I go there for lectures, and I've been there in the rural areas. It's abject poverty. It's 
abject poverty. It's, it's really, you, you, you have to see the extent of poverty in which people are living. It's, it's, it's indescribable. May Allah bless all the efforts and may Allah reward all the organizations who are trying to make their imprint and impression and trying to rescue and salvage. And may Allah reward the donor. May Allah reward each person. As believers, we know and understand the wealth and health that we have is an amana. Everything belongs to Allah. It's Fahdar Zawal al Fadli ya Jabir wa a'ti min dunya kaman sa'alaha fa inna dal arush jazilu al ata yudha'ifu bil habbati amthalaha. O Jabir, the way to secure the wealth you have is keep on giving it to others and then Allah will continue giving it to you. Sayyidina Ali said to Jabir, فَحْذَرْ زَوَالَ الْفَضْلِ يَا جَابِرْ وَأَعْتِ مِن دُنْيَاكَ مَنْ سَأَلَهَا Muhammad Ali said, kindness to others is the rent we pay for the place we occupy on earth. Kindness to others is the rent we pay for the place we occupy on earth. Ah, so the pagan Arab did that. The Quran frowns upon the pagan Arab and, and condemns him for suffering a stigma when a daughter was born. And today's modern world calls it safe abortion. Please help me. How do you tie the word safe with abortion? I don't know how to marry these two words. Ultrasonically, it has been proven that that innocent fetus sees this foreign object coming in. Oops, what's happening here? No, your prospective mother is not happy with the time of your arrival. What a world. Safe. How do you marry safe? وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَىٰ ضَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا That is why the ulama say when Allah spoke of qiyamah, Allah said, this is going to happen. This is, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُبِّرَتْ When the sun will lose its brightness. وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ When the stars will collapse. وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُيِّرَتْ When the mountains will move. وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ عُطِّلَتْ when a 10-month pregnant camel will be roaming the streets. When the wild predators will come away into the city. When the body will be paired with the soul. And when the innocent child that was killed by their own parents will be revived and resurrected and Allah will ask, why did your own parents kill you? Study the, I read a whole book on, on this year, the depression that people suffer after abortion. And the haunted memories. The scientific writer. The scholars say, why did Allah address in this verse the resurrection of the baby, whereas Qiyamah is going to address every injustice. Why, why did Allah highlight this year? And the answer given is that year, the very protectors were the perpetrators. The very protectors, anything happens to your child, you defend. But here the protector was the perpetrator. So Allah said, I will defend when the parents are the perpetrators. Yeah, read the verse. Wa idal mauuda. Wa ada means to bury alive. Wa idal mauuda. Bi ayi dham bin qutilat. Wa ida suhufu nushirat. When your book of deeds will be thrown before you. Wa idal jahim musu'irat. When hellfire will be ignited and intensified. Wa idal jannatu uzlifat. And paradise will be brought forward. عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ وَأَخَّرَتْ Every soul will know himself before he receives his book in how deep waters he or she is standing. You'll know where you are, man. After you wrote your paper, before the results come out, you know already where it is. You know what the story is. That's just confirming it, but you know it before that. فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالْخُنَّسِ الْجَوَارِ 
Allah speak, takes an oath of khamsa mutahayyara. The five receding planets. Khanasa, receding. Wal-layli idha as'as. As'as in Arabic is from the avdad. Avdad are the words that have the opposite meaning. Wal-layli idha as'as. Ay idha aqbal aw adbar. Oh, anyway, the point I'm saying is going forward to be productive, you have to watch your time. Life is running away. Life is just running away. I promise you, if we, if we don't decide and we don't start ticking the boxes and you don't get and you don't dive into it now, it's not going to happen. The one who spends today regretting yesterday will spend tomorrow regretting today. The one who spends today regretting yesterday, mane bo pastao rei gyo. To abe kei karo ni to kale pacho pastao rei jaye ta mane. I want to mention one incident and we we'll wrap it up. So Allah speaks about the seven sleepers, right? And uh, of course, their story is so unique. And uh, they slept for centuries, as the Quran speaks about it. And then when Allah revived them, and then uh, they started asking themselves, how long did you sleep? So someone said, uh, half a day or one day. You know, we're not sure. Istaqallu ayyam al-wisal, wa hakadha sha'nu ushaq al-jamal, wa yuqalu maqam al-muhibb ma'al habib wa in tala qasirun. وزمان الاجتماع وان كثر يسير ولا يكاد يعد المحب الليالي اذا كان قرير العين بالوصال اه oh, man this is استقلوا ايام الوصال these people were in the cave and they slept for centuries and then when they got up asked them how long i think we slept for half a day or one day they trivialized the time that they had devoted in the connection and the obedience of Allah. Because regardless of how long is the time for your beloved, the truth be told, it's never adequate. When Allah forgive, when you're chatting, chatting, or you are talking to someone and you are having a fantasy, oh, the, you, you won't realize the airtime, you won't realize the time, you won't realize the environment. You can talk, you're fresh, you, you, it's all good. Uh, Allah forgive us, we come in the masjid, we monitor the time. You go in the mall, we don't monitor time. Uh, when we watch in sports, we don't monitor time. Uh, when we stroll in, we're not monitoring time. It's just in matters of deen that will dictate to you where our priorities are. They slept for three centuries and when they got up, I think it was half a day. Istakallu, istakallu, istakallu. You know in Arabic they say, mahabba, uh, love is al mahabbatu. Istiqlalu al-kathir min habibik. So, istikthaaru al-qaleel min habibik. Two expressions. Muhabba is when you give something to your beloved, then even if it is significant, you consider it little. Istiqlalu al-kathir min nafsik. Istiqlal. No, it's nothing. And when you receive something from your dad, from your teacher, from someone senior, Istikthar al qalil min habibik. Then even something small you say is so great. Wa qalilu min ka yakfina. Wa qalilu ka la yuqalu lahu qalilu. Wa qalilu min ka yakfina. Even a little from you is much. The truth be told, it's an insult to consider anything of yours little. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave one person a date. He said, Subhanallah, tamaratun min rasulillah. A date from Nabi. Oh, I'm too happy. They say after he treasured that date, فَمَا لَبِثَ الرَّجُلُ أَنِ اسْتَغْنَى After that he became one of the wealthiest people of Medina. So, استَقَلُّوا أَيَّامَ الْوِصَالِ وَهَكَذَا شَأْنُ عُشَّاقِ الْجَمَالِ وَيُقَالُوا مَقَامُ الْمُحِبِّ مَعَ الْحَبِيبِ وَإِنْ طَالَ قَصِيرٌ وَزَمَانُ الْإِجْتِمَاعِ وَإِنْ كَثُرَ يَسِيرٌ So anyway, when they got up, there's so much written under this year. It's just amazing, amazing. After three centuries, and then they said, uh, so one said, I think we slept for half a day. The other one said, I think it's one day. Then they said, listen, Allah knows how long we slept. 
Rabbukum a'lamu bima labithum. It's a bit of an academic point, but I hope you'll appreciate it. Driving the same message of time. It's of essence. Value it, appreciate it, maximize it, do the best out of it. Uh, so he said, Rabbukum a'lamu bima labithum. Allah knows how long you slept. So, tab'athu. Tab'athu. Send one of you. Be wary kikum hadihi with these coins. They slept three centuries ago. They kept some money with them. Which makes you understand, principally, it's fine to keep and you should be traveling with some cash because is the call of Sufyan, rahimahullah. If it was not for having some basic wealth, these people will use you and just discard you. So, it's important. It's correct. It's, it's necessary. They had some cash with them. So they still thinking that, you know what, the time when there was all this wrong happening and they took shelter, it's the same era and period. But people didn't know where they were. They were gone in and the message was being transmitted generation after generation. It's a verse of the Quran, I'm telling you. And there's the backdrop to those verses. So they, uh, they said that, listen, take this here and go to the local town here. Uh, and please make sure that you bring halal food. Imagine you're hungry for three centuries and you're worried about halal. Uh, for us, it's just a love. You know, just make sure it's tasty. Ah, it will be halal. It's not like, uh, make sure it's halal, ah, it will be tasty. No, 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 no. Make sure it's tasty. Halal should be fine. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet of Allah, he said, I had a private moment, just me and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nobody else. I could ask him anything. Take a guess what Ali radiallahu anhu asked him. Mada asna'u li najati nafsi. What can I do to save my soul from Jahannam? If we get a private moment, what do we ask? Huh? We want to ask if Khidr alayhi salam is alive. Who performed Adam alayhi salam's nikah? Uh, what's the origin of jadu and sihr? No, ask something about your akhirat. Your own dealings. Your own inheritance. Your own matters. Ya Rasulullah, madha asna'u li najati nafsi? Oh Prophet of Allah, what can I do to save my soul? He said, do two things. Kul halalan wa kul sidqan. Speak the truth always and eat only that which is halal. Chapter close. It could only be a Nabi, and it could be only Ali to ask that question. What, what a rich dialogue. La ilaha illallah. Absolute. Just me and the Prophet of Allah, nobody else. So he said to go there and buy some food and make sure it's halal. Well, ya talattaf. So talattaf also, there's some say, a ta'aman latifan, khafifan, la kathifan. So much written on this here. Now, the scholars say, when they were discussing, did we sleep for half a day or one day? Then they said, no, don't worry. Allah knows how long we slept. You know what you do? Send somebody. So when they said send somebody, they didn't say wabba'athu. They said fabba'athu. And fa in Arabic is ta'qib ma'al wasal. Ta'qib ma'al wasal means sequence without interval. So in Arabic, if you say, akaltu, fasharibtu, fanimtu, I ate, I drank, I slept, that means that's the chronological order, that's the sequence without interruption. And if you say, akaltu, thumma, thumma, then it means it's the same sequence, but there were gaps in between. That is why many say that Sayyidina Maryam radiallahu anha, she conceived and she went into delivery immediately. Why? Because the Quran quotes the story with the adoption of fa. And the Arabic grammar tells you fa in Arabic, ta'qib ma'al wasal. Fa denotes sequence without interval. And thumma denotes sequence. Not an Arabic lesson, but you need to understand this to get to the point. Qala <laughs> 
وَلِنَجْعَلَهُ آيَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَرَحْمَةً مِنَّا وَكَانَ أَمْ فَحَمَلَتْهُ فَحَمَلَتْهُ فَانْتَبَذَتْ بِهِ فَأَجَاءَهَا الْمَخَاضُ Oh man فَحَمَلَتْهُ فَانْتَبَذَتْ The word fa This changes the whole dynamics of the meaning in this context. That is why many are suggestive that Sayyidatina Maryam radiallahu anha's conception, confinement, all was anan fanan, happening swiftly. In any case, whether it was instant or it was gradual, it was a miracle. There's no doubt about it. And in terms of the powers of Allah, everything is possible. Somebody asked Mufti Mahmoud sahab rahmatullahi, is the questioning in the grave possible? So he said, Mere liye, tere liye, ya Allah ke liye. He said, Is it in the cover of the question? Is it Mere liye, tere liye, ya Allah ke liye? He said, No, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is questioning in the grave possible? Is possible for who? For me to ask? For you to ask? Or for Allah to do it? Me, I can't ask you in this world, never mind in the grave. And if you don't doubt Allah has the power, and if you doubt Allah has the power, there's no iman. You know what does Allah say? Allah says, after you die, and you don't believe that I can resurrect you, and you think from person has died, and now he's passed on, and to revive life is difficult. Take this human and put him in a form which is more foreign to resurrection. And then see how I still revive him. Kul, kunu hijaratan aw hadida, aw khalqam mimma yakburu fi sudurikum. After he dies, make him into steel. Or make him into stone. And then see how I recreate and resurrect him. أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَلَّا نَجْمَعَ عِظَامَ You think I can't assemble your bones? بَلَا قَادِرِينَ عَلَىٰ أَن نُسَوِّيَ بَنَانَ I'll be putting your fingertips back in place. This is a straight translation, not commentary. Straight translation. أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ This man thing. أَلَّا نَجْمَعَ عِظَامَ I won't be able to put his bones. وَانْذُرْ إِلَى الْعِظَامِ كَيْفَ نُنْشِزُهَا ثُمَّ نَكْسُوهَا لَحْمَا فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ قَالَ أَعْلَمُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ So, coming back to the point, the adoption of the word fa means اُتْرُكُ مَا لَيْسَ بِضَرُورِ وَأْتُ مَا هُوَ ضَرُورِ That, oh my colleagues, oh my companions, Leave discussing that which is of no relevance and focus on that which is of relevance. Today in our life, we've preoccupied ourselves with so many things which in the greater happenings of, of, of life have no meaning, have no bearings. They will carry no weight. They will make no difference. You know, what's it? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam seen some people talking and people had gathered. They said, what's all this happening? He said, أَعْلَمُ النَّاسِ بِأَنْسَابِ الْعَرَبِ this man is a super authority on the genealogy of Arabs. You know, you get some people, they can make Haggai with everyone. And then he's going to, now he's going to operate this whole thing here and he's going to create the link and, you know, 45th cutting and, you know, make the... أَعْلَمُ النَّاسِ بِأَنْسَابِ الْعَرَبِ He's a super authority on genealogy. So people said, he's very, he's got a lot of knowledge. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, هَذَا عِلْمٌ لَا يَنْفَعْ وَجَهْلٌ لَا يَضُرْ هَذَا عِلْمٌ لَا يَنْفَعْ وَجَهْلٌ لَا يَضُرْ this is knowledge that can't get you anywhere and ignorance that won't set you back. Wow. Aure tohu, neni aure tohu. Aure tohu, neni aure tohu. But if you don't know the Quran and you don't know the seerah of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, then things are serious, my brother. May Allah bless you all.
once again it was amazing alhamdulillah may allah bless my dear brother huzaifa frankly speaking if it wasn't for him i doubt i would have been here may allah bless him he's been very patient he's been honestly throughout the year in fact i was in india studying he came to visit me in india at the madrasa and came and spent time with me and uh, kept on you know what knocking my brains please salihin ramadan salihin ramadan salihin ramadan may allah grant him the full ajr my schedule was quite tight and i doubt i would have made it but his passion your sincerity allah's kindness allah's mercy allah's allowed it to happen i ask allah to make our assembly our get together meaningful i ask allah to make it that each one of us here stand up from here better in terms of our faith rejuvenated in our iman we all go back with a lesson we go back and we introspect with our life and we 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 we, we do some serious audit of ourselves riyah qaisi said i sat down i audited my life and i studied studied and i seen i got about 40 odd sins lini fu arba'un dhamba he was a great scholar then i sat down wa qad istaghfartu allah li kulli dhanbin mi'ata alf marra then i asked allah forgiveness for every sin 100000 times and then i gave up each sin i did a thorough audit on myself and i sat and i wrote it out what am i doing wrong in my life way and i studied studied and i did this audit and i came up so let's go back my brother we are in audit time we are in barakat time we are in time where rahmat is coming down where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is multiplying maximize it and like the people of kahf i say the same thing they moved away from sin and went to sleep in these nights of ibadat make little ibadat and if you can't make extended ibadat go sleep may allah bless you all may allah accept from all rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an-nar allahumma ij'al ijtima'ana hadha ijtima'an marhuma wa tafarraqna min ba'dihi tafarraqan ma'suma wa la taj'al fina wa la minna wa la ma'na shaqiyan wa la mahruma allahumma a'tiq riqabana wa riqab aba'ina wa ummahatina min an-niran اللهم خذ بنواصينا الى البر والتقوى اللهم اصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمه امرنا واصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا واصلح لنا اخرتنا التي اليها معادنا واجعل الحياه زياده لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحه لنا من كل شر اللهم ما قصر عنه راينا ولم تبلغه مسالتنا من خير الدنيا والاخره فاجعل لنا منه اوفر الحظ والنصيب اللهم انا نسالك من خير ما سالك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر ما استعاذك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم انت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين